May I speak with you more? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Namaste. For welcome. This. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I just want to settle in a little bit because <laughs> there is something that really clicked in my heart when I was listening to the contemplation guidance just before the satsang. Yes, and right. I wanted to take the opportunity to share that with you directly. Mm-hmm. Something I felt so strongly that I I feel so much grateful for is that when I was sitting with a feeling that who am I without any relationship, without any attachment, I, I just burst into tears because I felt I was so happy with just being nothing. Yes. And I think it was the first time I felt that so strongly that I feel so grateful for that. But um, there was also something I wanted to check in with you. And mm-hmm. I do still feel that the stronger I'm connecting with this feeling, the stronger I also feel the pull from from the ego mind. And uh, I also feel that that is, I cannot say honestly that that is not affecting me in some way. And uh, there is this feeling within that's kind of wondering if this pull from the ego mind will ever settle down uh, just by staying in in my pure awareness. Uh, And something within me is also questioning as I'm still feeling this pull so strongly. Am I truly, am I truly within myself, or, or is this, yeah, is there something that I'm not getting, or something somehow I'm not connecting because I feel this, this pull is growing so much stronger. Yes, which pull is growing so much stronger? The pull from the ego mind. Ah, yeah, yes, and it may you are gradually somehow uh, the, the process of maturing. Uh, becoming more empty may take time. We should not be so impatient. Uh, the impatience is is can only serve in saying I don't want to waste time. Uh, and uh, a developing faith will come with that because uh, if you are eating the fruit, you must be benefiting from the nutrition of it. And uh, you say about the relationship. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not asking anyone to reject any relationship. I mean, <clears throat> independent of that, you unto yourself are what you see. You know that uh, you're not always stretching to be in combination with something, but in this you're invited to take a look. You see, and it's not a visual look only. But it comes also automatically when you follow the guidance uh, to be in the position of just observing with detachment. And gradually, as you are not trying to suffocate the world, not try to cover the senses so you don't perceive, no, let them all be there. They have their work. And in their way, they will later become instruments of your purity. But while we have a strong sense of personal identity, then they, it's as though they are working for the ego's portrait of itself to fulfill vain um, projections also, to try and fulfill our projections based on such a limited uh, realization of ourself. And you're coming back into yourself, clearly. If you say that the contemplation has really spoken to some place within you. And it is true, maybe you are not. No one is able to to measure their progress, to measure how clean they are, in a way. So I said, don't worry about that. Just continue to observe, like I say to you. If I ask you to observe the world, there is no end to it. The shapes are unending, the permutations are unending. But if I say, let it arise by itself, what? arises in the mind as thought and sensations, feeling, or whatever comes through the senses. Let them just be there for a moment. Uh, Don't be trying to manipulate them. 
rather just be aware or generally take a panoramic view of the mind energy as it arises within you, but remain conscious of yourself as being independent of that which you are perceiving. At the same time, I am saying, remain imageless. Don't go deep into that right now. Just stay with what the words invite. Don't take shape for the moment. And you see that you are still here. The full force of your presence is still here. You don't need to hold on to a self-portrait in some physical way to represent what you are. Because the portraits will change. If every year a portrait was made by a great artist every year right up until your present time, you are able to look at through all of them, and it's almost as though each one is like a bead on a necklace, but you are like the, the cord that holds them. Your beingness is able to perceive, to be aware of all these shapes that arise before you, but they come and go. And you are the witness itself that can verify they come and go. As a matter of fact, has any thought ever come and stayed? They come and go. And those that you somehow feel some affinity towards them, they seem to come back and they, they almost gradually join in the sense of yourself, because you have given them permission, you have given a space for them, you have said that these are important, so you have kept them. But when I ask you simply to observe with detachment, you can let you don't need to hold on to anything at all it is as though all the sensations and the thoughts and so on are like clouds floating along in the unmoving sky so the clouds are part of the sky but you cannot say that the sky is a cloud it's only uh, an analogy a kind of metaphor pointing that you are the unchanging presence in front of or within whom the changeful expressions and impressions of life are floating by. Included in these cloud movements, I would include something that may surprise you, your sense of self, your personal identity or egoic identity, is also a massive cloud. It is like a, a mafia cloud that seems to hold on all the other clouds. But it also is floating. It also is floating by. You see? If you stay in the position, in the place of the formless or imageless perceiver, nothing sticks. Just like the clouds, they don't stick. And the sky has no favorite clouds. It doesn't say, OK, this one I like, you hold on, the other ones can go. Everything is floating by. Whether clouds or rainbow or thunder, lightning, rain, everything, stars, moon, everything is just appearing and disappearing. But your sky of being is always here. So when I invite you to just sit and be by yourself, not as a recluse, not as you're running away from the world, but that actually you're being very present with yourself, as yourself, and observing the the different ebbs and flow that uh, journeys through your field of uh, seeing or being or consciousness. Everything's coming and going. And gradually, the important thing I say is keep remembering that you're only observing and your presence is held here. Don't combine yourself with anything that you see. And gradually, something very beautiful is going to happen. If you don't uh, like some reflex, as you begin to pay attention to the thoughts, it's as though you take identity with them, you become involved in them, and you're sucked into them through the, the small aperture of personhood. And you lose, in a sense, your conscious contact with the greater being that you are. This is the same for everyone. And it has been so... Uh, this is not... Uh, a 21st century discovery or painting. It is as ancient as human beings.
as ancient as consciousness. So that's all I'm asking. And what you're seeking is that when you ask, but I don't know perhaps how, how, if, how strong the mind will take me and so on. Actually, I'm pointing out that when you say that, you're referring to yourself as your personal identity, not as the beingness. And as you continue, each time, sometimes, you'll uh, somehow get identified with what you see. And at those times, you'll feel you need to control something, you need to get rid of something, you need to change something, you need to get somewhere, and you're in the traffic, you're on the journey, just like the thoughts. But when you stay back as just that detached weakness, all these are floating by, and you stay with it. Even if you feel now and again you get pulled in, don't judge yourself. Just come back again and stay. Watch the show passing. The whole world is like a passing show when you are still. And gradually you begin to feel the full power of your presence, which it is like it resonates like peace, like a solid peace, a well a well beingness, joy, silent, content, happy. Not happy about, just happy. Like happiness is your nature like that. So this is what if you follow this, it is like all the different pointers I can give you, this, 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 all shrink down into this, into a capsule of pointers. And just be consistent with it. Because the mind will keep on introducing another technique and another technique and try this one and try this one. And uh, we trust that because you feel that that is the most uh, constant tool you have. But now I'm showing you a space behind the facade. Uh, off the stage, you are sitting here. And sometimes I say, um, it is just like you are sitting, just be with this, just like you are sitting in a room that is very peaceful, very quiet, you are alone, and you are content. You are sitting inside your own presence. And in front of you is a window, and through this window the world is passing. Through this window, life is moving, pulsing. Friends and family and jobs and past and present and the activities are happening there. But you are quietly just watching, not even interfering, but conscious, not being bored. You are at the same time simultaneously watching and at the same time resting in your own being. But don't log into the picture. Don't go, ah, stop, stop, I want to go and join this. Just stay put. Even though some scenes might be very compelling, say, ah, these are the ones that would catch you normally, and again pull you into personhood. But stay shapeless and observe, because it is worth it to receive the greater gift of your own presence, recognised. Okay. You may speak on. It's okay. That's something I, I also feel I'm so grateful for that I truly feel is that uh, the more and more I'm I'm seeing in this observing state, actually the more things are just like unfolding fruitfully in my life. Yes. Including relationship. It's not like I don't feel I don't have to take any decision anymore. I don't feel I have to act on anything, but still I have relationship that I, I do really appreciate that actually is even more beautiful now, the more and more I'm staying in this observing state. And same with my duties, like things in my life that I still feel that I'm I'm doing, but I'm doing them in a way where I'm not feeling I'm kind of dependent on them. Same with my relationship. I. I am so grateful for all human beings I have in my life. And I feel so much love now in a way I didn't feel before because I'm staying in the observing state. I don't feel I'm depending on them. Yes. And I think that realization for me is really is something I'm really, really grateful for. What a powerful sharing. 
This is a, a universal sharing. This is not just, oh, this is one person's life. Yes, maybe an opportunity for so many to listen. I'd like to stop for a moment and listen, and again, just go over what you are sharing here. That's so, so um, powerful that uh, since you have been uh, giving attention to just sitting and being aware without interfering, without panicking, without going to the mind or going to the past, your life in all of its expression is actually benefiting. Uh, without, uh, because sometimes when we hear that uh, observe without attachment, something may panic and go, whoa, but I need to be hands-on with my life, otherwise I'm going to be missing something. This is a con- common trap for many people. No? So you're saying that, no, 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 the more I'm observing, which implies a kind of stillness, taking time for yourself to sit, it may seem to be a very passive state, and uh, whereas the mind is exciting to kind of move on, to collect more adventures to step into more activity to fulfill more projections but you have quietly just sat inside your own being the more you say you have done that everything is automatically improving it's not that you are lazy uh, then the world I sit here and the world just gets on with itself in a way it is true it gets on with itself anyway but uh, not excluding you as your being in fact the world you see is very very linked with who you are and the quality of your consciousness. Because you are more at peace, you bring that peace, gets infused in the world that you see. And so uh, you, have, you are also sharing your relationships better. You keep using the word relationship, I think it's a very important um, thing for you. But actually, we have relationship with all of life, actually. Not just personal one-to-one relationship. You see? And you find that uh, without trying to control, to manipulate, um, to get a better angle, everything by itself is flowing because you are inside your stillness. And stillness doesn't mean tightness. No, but something is relaxed and peaceful, so the world can come, it can appear, and reveal its beauty to you. This is very, very important. I pick up on that. And I would just encourage you to carry on. I wanted to share what I'm hearing so that we don't miss it, because often beautiful things come, wise uh, sharing come to us, and a part of the mind just sieve it aside, because the more active uh, personal interest, you know, gets over there and misinterprets and then takes what it wants. But here in satsang, your opportunity, you have a time, all of you, you have chosen to come, to sit in your chair, to sit here and to be listening, um, to what is being shared, and to listen to your own heart and being, to be present with it. So this is a beautiful, a beautiful um, sharing, a very, very inspiring for those who are open to it, because it's the same way in whatever situation, in whatever way your life manifests, the same fundamental principle is working, just like Moa is sharing right now. Very, very good. Is it true that uh, you, you are Ramdev's sister? Yes, that is true <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, I'm just being, I'm yeah. just being, be, being uh, someone is is just yeah. picked up on the screen, the Ramdev's <laughs> sister. Yes, yes, and it's also. It doesn't matter to what you're sharing, but uh, you know, just <laughs> for actually, us because everybody loves him. Yeah, see? yeah. <laughs> but actually, for me now, it's like the relationship is something more than just siblings. This is like it yeah. has transformed to something else, which is also actually really yes. beautiful. Yes, also your spontaneous contacts with people is the way that you relate. You're relating and uh, and uh, and what you impart uh, from and through your own being. If it comes through the mind, it's always something, but gradually in your stillness, so much is um, uh, shines from you. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you and the entire Sangha. I'm so, so grateful for what we can share together. <laughs> love you all. Love you. Love you. Love you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. 